At this presentation, Francisco's audience, mostly composed of faculty and doctoral candidates, will not only elaborate on the academic background, but also explain why he is taking this show on the road and presenting at multiple venues. Topic has been found to be useful to many, so he hopes to also complete a few elective advanced level three, four, and five projects with it. Sharing this half hour at his school would further validate his conviction on it being something usable and practical for most any intermediate Zoom user to tackle and learn. Francisco is working on a presentation mastery um, pathways, level five, prepare to speak professionally, 18 to 20 minutes. Please help me welcome Francisco Palacio, University of Arizona 2022 Research Symposium, University of Arizona 2022 Research Symposium, Francisco Palacio. Francisco, you're muted. You're muted. Take two. Uh, thank you, Voice of Independence. Again, uh, the introduction explains the, the audience that this is intended for. Uh, the presentation is on April 20th at uh, 2.20 p.m. I will be sharing some links. So if anybody wants to save the chat or wants to ask me about the content later, very important thing. But I, want, I said I would put it on the, huh. okay, okay, there you go. I'm going to upload the presentation as well. And now that I'm going to start for uh, Robert, the timer, of course, soon it's been a little stupid with me to okay. okay, okay, there you go. Um, let me, let me, let me share and have the background. Uh, so you can start. Uh, okay, I need some PowerPoint. Uh, version. Okay, and the time here. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Twenty-two minutes I have on each slide. So. To the faculty and professors at the University of Arizona Global Campus Research Symposium today, Wednesday, April 20th, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm presenting on 30 uh, minutes or so about further researching the concept of collaborative content creation and curation, C4 in short, initially within the Toastmasters International Organization. I consider myself to be a digital creator, or at least that's what Instagram thinks of me, maybe Twitter and even Facebook. I have been a Toastmaster on and off since 2008. And I was, I would say fortunate enough to have taught what at that moment was a trailblazing path into what is now a daily ubiquitous function, if you will, of technology, and that is this, video conferencing. I, for one, believe as a researcher of what many have called groupware, you can call it social media, you can call it uh, network base, but I like the word groupware because within the confines of this organization, I have found an ideal place to practice and learn something that I find to be very portable. In, in, in IT terms, we talk about a use case. A use case is how we touch and, and play with the application. You're gonna hear the word brand, create, share, and prepare. That has been another summation of, of the concept. And this is all about original content. I've made this presentation based on question that you may be having. So you would ask me, who is this for? 
arguably anyone nowadays with a phone, and by a phone, I, I'm talking about these wondrous little devices that we carry on a, uh, around with dozens of apps, okay? So combine that with the fact that as you drive through many uh, of our roads nowadays and you look at the digital signs in the church, live stream at 10 a.m., you, you see this happening not only within organizations such as Toastmasters, but everywhere, personally, at work. We have just completed a shift where we literally threw away our old phone system, remember handsets and all that, and replaced it with Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is part of the Office 365 suite, and I must admit, it meets all the requirements of what I've been researching so far. So if somebody at Microsoft is listening, that's part of what I wanted to present. Your product teams really, really incorporates a lot of what I, for one, have been researching on in terms of this. You could also ask me, what is this for? I see, personally, intermediate and beginner and users as my audience. Of course, you're going to have the Zoom masters, the people that know this, like the back of their hands, they have been practicing, they have been invited. For example, here at Toastmasters, we run pretty amazing virtual conferences. There is a video of a recent one from April 9th that I will be sharing at the end. It's on my YouTube channel. That's ultimately where everything ends up at in my case. And in the case of this intervention, it's in YouTube. Because, again, through this use case, I'm encouraging people to take a stab at creating their own content. And why do we want to create their own content? Very simple. Within Toastmasters itself, there are projects to create a blog. There are projects to create a podcast. What better time to capture what you have already prepared, and that, uh, that Toastmasters is really good at. We call them prepared speeches for a reason. Might as well save it. And I call them collaborative because in Toastmasters, most everything happens within a club or an area or a division or a district or ultimately within the context of a truly international organization with membership in the hundreds of thousands and a presence in almost any country, every country on the planet. You may be wondering, okay, that sounds really ambitious, but where does this go? Your feed, your timeline, your channel, however you wanna call it. Very important point about what I'm proposing to research further is the fact that I hope and I aim to prepare so well that there will be no need for post-production. By post-production, I mean, sure, I created the file, and then it takes me a few extra days to load because I have to tinker with it in yet another application. Undeniably, the results that you get from spending that time on, on a cross-production app for video and for editing make it a higher quality, but I'm trying to be very agile. Many of us here understand that word in terms of being flexible and being quick. Francisco, but you've been talking so much about Toastmasters. It's only for Toastmasters. No. That's <clears throat> when I really became encouraged by what I was drafting at the beginning of my graduate program in instructional design technology within the Forbes uh, School of Business. This is a uh, master's of science. Yes, I found Toastmasters, many Toastmaster members willing to help me, willing to partake. But then coincidentally, I started studying in the midst of the recent health crisis. And then I realized, wait a minute, this is a, a, a perfect confluence of us using more of the technology, and again, companies and other organizations realizing that they could use the content and share it. So who else can use this, Francisco, you would ask me that. So aside from documenting their prepare speech projects, as I'm suggesting to uh, my fellow 
members of Toastmasters. Again, I just recently presented to some of them. I'm, I'm sifting through the initial responses. I offer to volunteer and help them with maybe a half hour here and there in exchange for a hashtag. Many companies, and in my personal experience, we're talking about major cloud companies, will use this technology to document and present. For example, uh, a leading CRM company uses it to document and present the software features on, a, on their major releases. Myself, at a smaller level, I have managed to use Microsoft Teams up rather successfully by adding a, a video version to what we call, in my place of work, a work instruction. An instruction, an intervention, if you want to get technical, but the ability that this group work gives me to have a meeting, use the meeting, invite to label, to, to leverage the nomenclature, and have the experts there. We're talking about the subject matter experts as well as the, the developers and the business analysts. Capture that moment. The meeting is already, as some of my supervisors remind me, it's an expensive undertaking because you know, you're taking half an hour, an hour out of four, five, six people. Might as well capture it, might as well uh, record it with Microsoft Teams. It's so amazing how the, I'm gonna say the artificial intelligence really displays its uh, capabilities. You get a transcription, a live transcription, which recently I had an epiphany. You get it on a file that you can then polish and upload back again to turn it into your closed captioning. That is why it has all the timestamps. Again, most anything related to software, which is most everything nowadays, that is worth documenting and sharing. Why now, Francisco? What's the urgency? Personally, I think many organizations were able to move forward and in many ways grew, thanks to the fact that even though we were so constrained by whatever you wanna call it, I don't wanna fall into controversial areas, the bottom line is that we played with the technology, we learned to use it, and it will be hard not to make the case, especially with what some call the great resignation, which in my opinion has a lot to do with the prevalence of remote work. It's no longer a niche. Now remote work is part of most serious conversations and it is now documented companies are having a hard time pulling their workers back in because when they try to bring them back into the office, that's when they jump to another company that accommodates the use of virtual conferencing and group work 100% of the time. Francisco, what's the obsession with these apps? Personally, I have been exposed to Zoom for the past four to five years, Microsoft Teams for the part, uh, Last couple of years, I am amazed uh, at the oh, I forgot the most important one. And you too. I saw one of my videos. I will call it the seminal video for this whole uh, collaborative content creation and curation idea. It dates back to two thousand eight. I, I found that video on YouTube. So these applications, all these applications, especially YouTube, is undeniable how. When approach, again, the principle of create, to brand, and to share, which these principles align with the three learning outcomes in their intervention, when properly orchestrated, they will limit the need for additional time spent on post-production. I'm not rallying against post-production. I'm trying to perhaps even make it easier to post-produce because as many people in the industry say, to say I'll fix it in post is actually a bit of an oxymoron. Francisco, what do you mean no post? Again, I come from an organization that stresses the preparation and the rehearsing. I call it an epiphany again. As I've been presenting on this, I realized what better way then to turn on my Zoom, turn on my camera, run through my PowerPoint, speak freely, and then look at the clock. Or in true Toastmaster fashion, have my timer application open 
and monitor what I'm doing. To me, that is the kind of production value that our uh, pathways uh, learning experience brings and why I see it, I see the value and I see the concatenation between what we're teaching, what we're aiming for, again, in the social media, in this blogging, in post-captain uh, process, a uh, project, project, sorry, and what I'm discovering and trying to encapsulate in this intervention to avoid having to fix things in post when as a Toastmaster, I've learned if I'm well prepared and anybody who has seen the documentary the title speak with a big exclamation mark, speak with a big exclamation mark can attest to the fact that yes, uh, we have a literally a world championship. And what happens is these speeches have been rehearsed many, many times. So not to, not to take it that far, but you prepare for something and you have to present to your boss or you have to present to your SMEs using these apps, you, you, you run a couple of drafts, you, re, you, 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 you record them, you check your video, you check your audio, you check your lighting. By the time you present to them, it's gonna look amazing. And nobody has to look at that. You can delete all those, all those files, but you evaluate it. You were able to evaluate, you see some self-evaluation. I'm reiterating here, that's how we do it. That lies at the core of the Toastmaster program. The, the proposed research that I'm working on is meant to encourage initially members of our organization of the Masters Master International to use this uh, use case, as I explained for about 40 minutes in detail, going through the introduction of the intervention. Uh, so I encourage those attending today to, if they have the time, to watch it in some more detail. But this proposed research that I'm talking about today is simply meant to encourage members of the organization to use this C4, I like acronyms, collaborative content creation and curation use case to document their own pathways learning experience project, at least to self-reflect, to evaluate by watching them. Again, with this technology comes, I would say, some additional responsibility in Toastmasters, uh, you know, we call it our, our stage time, our, our stage area. The lighting, the microphone, the cameras, all those things count. Then uh, adding the evaluation, I hope uh, when, when you give a speech, your evaluator wants to do it with you. And then finally, as we're gonna talk about uh, in, in the next few slides, these speeches could be chosen to highlight uh, your public relation efforts. Once again, uh, for those unfamiliar with those masters, I have come back over and over again because what they teach are principles, oratory, active listening and feedback is something that this organization takes very, very seriously. However, in terms of this intervention, I'm borrowing from what I've learned and I'm trying to move it into other areas. I believe this use case is very portable. Okay, what else can it do, Francisco? I, 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 I'm interested. I, I'm starting to see some of you nodding by now. As I said, uh, as I briefly went over, not only can we use these speeches to evaluate ourselves, to keep a journal. That's another, uh, that's the hashtag I'm saving for the end, to, to journal our journeys. But this content, I've watched so many amazing speeches at the club and area level uh, that I'm thinking much like some, uh, the majority of the world championship speeches are featured on YouTube. Why not go ahead and enhance the content that we're sharing and that we're trying to use? Again, not just as Toastmasters, but as professionals, as community leaders, as volunteers, use that content to illustrate your promotions. In other words, the portability. 
So how are you planning to do all this, Francisco? That, again, it sounds very ambitious. I will spend about a year on this proposed research. I was already able to take advantage of uh, an educational hour at one of our spring conferences. Toastmasters put together also something called the district PLIs, maybe some of the detailed uh, portions of the pre-learning outcomes. I can, again, ask to present. I'm not a member here only in the United States. Uh, I'm participating in a recently charter club that caters to another one of my passions, which is linguistics situated in Europe. And another thing that I'm finding out to presenting is that I'm getting to know, I'm getting to network with established subject matter experts for the podcast project. That's ideally the, the scenario, the interview. So I'm, I'm starting to line those up, even here within the faculty, uh, as part of the, the honors program, Dr. Hill, Dr. Stubbs, I'm inviting you again as we uh, come together and hopefully meet in person in commencement. Let's talk. Uh, Dr. Hill, you recorded me. It was a quick Zoom, 20 minutes. That's a perfect illustration of what uh, the use case is. It encourages me. Uh, Dr. Stops, you said that this is something that you could take back to your students. That was very encouraging when I heard it from both. Okay, Francisco, now you're, you're moving back into the weeds. So how granular is the research that you're planning to do? I would focus on one thing. I would focus on something that not only allows most of us aficionado uh, digital media creators to to do things, but also uh, for most everybody out there on, on, the, on the big World Wide Web, a hashtag. Those can be tracked, those can be followed, and above all, those can cross-pollinate our efforts. So that's how granular I want to get. Participate, collaborate, don't even mention my name, just use a hashtag. So as we get closer to the end, uh, for those of you who are into the instructional design field, Discourage explains, and this is what I chose from his textbook, this intervention was created for social network-driven delivery. It happens on the Facebooks, on the LinkedIn's, on the Twitters. It aims for blended informal learning. I love that word because it boils down to organic learning. Again, I don't have time to explain how we do it in Toastmasters. But now that I've become an instructional designer, I can see that that's how we do it. It's literally learn by doing. It's literally shadowing. It's, 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 it's peers explaining and, and people with experience mentoring you. And finally, from the textbook from Tiskeric, he introduced me to the concept of a community of practice. We have many established communities of practice on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I'm hoping, much like I did last week for the event, Somebody from uh, their district group created a little promo. And when I tried to share it on the international group, it allowed me to create an event. So those are the kind of things that encourage me. Uh, I've saved these proceedings uh, as proof of concepts on the YouTube channel. I already have the April 9th. I'm going to have this one. Uh, uh, there'll be an open house that I want to report as a public relations officer. And I'm planning to present at my club in Europe on September 4th, again, as part of this roadshow. So far, how long, Francisco? I think I'm going to stop in the spring of 2023. I'm going to give myself a year to really present, interact, meet people. Again, the, use the delivery methodology, the communities of practice, the informal learning. Here's where I want you to remember something. Journaling journey is what I'm trying uh, presenting as a title for the podcast and the video blog on the existing YouTube channel. And that's the hashtag that I hope to get from those that I help and support with their endeavors. Is that all? Is that where you're going to stop? I don't know. Uh, getting a doctor in technology is going to help my student loan balloon again. But I think I'm already drafting 
are somewhat valuable and somewhat usable thesis statement for a doctoral dissertation. Oh, I see all of you nodding. It seems like many of you are in. Again, the intervention, I'm available for half hour sessions with those interested. The website is journalingjourney.org. Again, journalingjourney.org. I'm gonna copy the optimal way to share our chat. It's there. And the optimal way to reciprocate and reward me is to use that hashtag. Hashtag journaling journey. Thank you very much. <laughs>